Like, if you're a fat person like me, when they take more than a little tube of blood out of you, the first thing you open your eyes is you want a can of Coke. Yeah, the blood sugar. The blood sugar. Yeah, that you drop. can of Coke uh -huh. fucking put you right back tip top magoo. Uh -huh. Everything, whatever was tip happening. Tip top magoo. Yeah, whatever was happening, happened. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And if you got a turkey sandwich with cheese, even better. That's why everybody used to give blood because a lot of times you have to give blood with no food in your stomach. Right. That's torture for it a is. guy like me. No food, no fucking coffee, just mouthwash. You got to go down there. Oh, oh, you got to suck on that mouthwash the whole way down there. Man, this mint is good. <laughs> you pull in there, you got mouthwash. You, as soon as that needle comes out, all I'm thinking about is about food. Ugh. I would bring fucking food with me. I, I was going to ask you, you brought a turkey sandwich? Yeah, I would bring <laughs> fucking... I would make my wife make sure you get a, a nice turkey Swiss on toast with a slice of tomato. <laughs> make two of them and a can of Coke. And I would fucking inhale the Coke. Oh, my God. And eat the two. When, when you have surgery... And they take you to recovery. What do you think they give you? That that trashy hospital they give food. You ass, they give you applesauce first to, to whatever, to blend into your system. Yeah, so easy system. digestion. And then after that, they show up with a turkey sandwich that you get a better sandwich at, in prison. Yeah, you really do. It's you get a, a better sandwich it's, no, no, it's that a, was in the you know trash. It's a 7-Eleven sandwich. Oh, no. Which I'm not against if they're it's fresh. almost worse. It's like a 7-Eleven sandwich that had been like left out in the air for a couple yes. of days. No, no, they're not that bad. I mean, the, at the hospital, they give you a little fucking uh, uh, ketchup, a uh, uh, little mustard so you're not fucking eating. Yeah, so you you're know, not like... The fucking Swiss cheese. Yeah, so your lips are gone. Your mouth. <laughs> Dry mouth from a fucking turkey sandwich. What's going on with you, Jessica <laughs> Maple Lisa? I know you're a big activist on stuff. I, yeah. I really love that you uh, breast cancer, mm -hmm. fucking vets. I don't know who else. Cats. Uh, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Yeah, That's my father one. passed away from it in 2018, and I just come, you know, smoke weed and talk to my fans. I, tonight, actually, every Wednesday at 5 o'clock Pacific, I answer questions and just get stoned and bring a little awareness to the disease, let people know the stigma and, and the wrong things about it and try and bring some light to it and bring some joy, now, you know, a little joy. Is there a way to avoid Alzheimer's, or is it genetic? The, Does it run in your family? From what I understand, the percentage of familial Alzheimer's, like the genetic side, is a very low percentage. That it's mainly, from the things that I've read and what I've learned, that it's an inflammatory disease of the brain, which is caused by a lot of extenuating circumstances. Stress, oxidative stress, emotional stress, environmental stress, your diet. Diet's a huge factor. There's a really good book by Dr. Lisa Moscone called Brain Food which is all about the correlation between what you eat and the degradation of your brain and the synapses and all of the, you know, amyloids that build up the plaques that cause Alzheimer's and sort of how food can help prevent those those sort of things happening. Do you eat a certain way because of it? It changed the way I eat. It changed everything. Yeah. I I took a look at what I was eating and I was scared. I mean, from a, a personal standpoint was my dad i didn't want to lose him but also i share his blood so it made me worried that i'm going to be predispositioned to this so you know it made me definitely switch what i eat but i still enjoy shit i like i mean fuck grilled cheese sandwiches are so good mac and cheese anything with cheese is so fucking good but th that food is brutal on your body it's brutal i mean it's like between a grape or a mac and cheese come on you can go mac and cheese all day <clears throat> but it definitely made me switch it up, consider things. What do you more. avoid? I try to avoid dairy. I try to avoid processed meat, mainly meat in general, processed enriched flour, any sort of fake bread, anything that doesn't perish within a long time. I, I try and eat as healthy and clean as I can. I just had a really interesting study yesterday that four, more than four slices of bacon a week will fucking kill you. You know what? I'm done. <laughs> How many slices of bacon are you eating? I only eat two slices at a time because it's only three Weight Watcher points. Right. So That's I only good. Eat two pieces. You look younger and brighter than I've remembered for a long time. I told it to you last time I saw you. You look like you've gotten more fit. Are you doing a lot? Yeah. You a look lot. younger. No. It's you look the more weight, rested. It's the weights. Mm. Yeah, and now I focus. That I, I won't fucking. I will not stop preaching that rogan podcast 
when he had the guy out about sleep. Sleep, yo. I had not fuck, stopped it is preaching so it. Vital. I love so the, vital. I love the Stephen, uh, the, the the fucking Stephen Tyler uh, podcast with Rogan. I could name you the top ten Rogan fucking podcast, but the one that changed my life completely I have to was listen the sleep to it. one. Yeah, weight wise, sleep is huge for Alzheimer's huge. too. Sleep is huge, guys, and that's I'll when your brain you, cleans itself out. I didn't. I you know Lee thinks I goof on him. I swear to my fucking daughter, my wife, anything that's sacred to me, this podcast, I st- stopped taking naps at like three. Yeah. When my father died, something happened that my mother told me. She goes, for some reason, you didn't, you, you're, your triggering was you can't sleep in the daytime. You were waiting for him. Mm. So for a long time, I didn't, I didn't take a nap till I started dating a stripper. In 1995, <laughs> I would imagine you need a nap dating a stripper because she would get home at two. Right, she'd get up at eight. We'd do our shit. Yep, we'd go back. I'd give her a stab. You're on the stripper schedule. And then we'd take the we'd take the two thirty to five nap. Then she'd get up. She'd eat healthy, you know, turkey burgers with mushrooms yep. and stuff. And then I'd start drop her off at the strip club. But she was the first person. That introduced me, like she's like to naps. To naps, they're like, so. Vital. I was out all day. Ooh. I was raised to once no. you get up, you're done. And look at that generation now. And that generation, and then now I'm mixing the cocaine. Oh and no, then, sleep! You put your brain on so much. Oh stress. my god! And then throw in a disease that I acquired in like '98 that I, didn't, that I didn't know that is the number one growing disease in men that will take you out. It will take you out, and people fucking don't have an idea. Sleep apnea will take you out. Oh, yeah. Sleep apnea will take you out so fucking quickly. The first time, late guys, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you for your own good. The first time your girlfriend, your mother, your father, your grandfather, anybody says to you, listen, man, I heard you snoring last night. Just stop what you're doing. Stop it. Come to the realization that it's going to get worse. It might not be a year, it might not be two years, but in three years, you're going to start running into this fucking wall. And unless you've had sleep apnea, it's tough to describe it. I hate doctors. What causes it? Do you know what causes it? Fat. <laughs> We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. 